Well, that princess outfit, um, I really feel like I grew up to be a princess. I married my college sweetheart, and he is my Prince Charming. Aww. And uh, back in 2008, um, I was one of the luckiest women alive. I had three healthy, beautiful children, ages three, five, and seven. I was not working. Uh, I was on permanent vacation as an at-home mom. It was the best job ever. That year, the Patriots made it to 16 and 1. Bush was coming to the end of lots of Bushes. How many years was that? And one day in February of that year, my second child, Reed, became ill, and I loved sick days. Secretly, it was like, oh, my kids get really mellow, and they want to cuddle on the couch. And so he stayed home, and we um, laid in front of the wood stove, and he had a terrible cough. And that was the day I caught his terrible cough. And I coughed like he did. Coughed for maybe a week, but I coughed for four months. I could not stop coughing to the point where I cracked a rib. And I saw doctors a couple of times, got some antibiotics, and I just wasn't getting better, but I was starting to feel more and more tired. I thought, oh, what's going on? And a friend of mine said to me, you ought to go have your blood taken. So I said, all right, I'll do that. And I went to the doctor, and he said, uh, we need to admit you to the hospital right now. And I said, what's going on? He said, your blood counts are so low that uh, you don't have an immune system right now. I don't know how you're living with three cesspools and you're not... <laughs> Actually, he said, I can't believe you're still alive living with those kids because of all the germs. So my red blood cell count, which should have been at about 14 or 15, was down to four. And my white blood cell count, which should have been three or four, Fletch, I don't know if I'm getting those numbers right, but um, was below one, and so there was great concern. So they put me in the hospital, I went to the bone marrow transplant unit, which was um, really sad because uh, I couldn't have any visitors, so I was really lonely, and went through a whole lot of tests for five days that most of them were very painful. And anyway, we finally um, tried to be optimistic and thought maybe this is some really weird, strange cold from around the world or something, and turns out, the doctor came in the fifth day and he said, we finally, it took us a long time, we just got a head scratcher, we figured it out. You have Hodgkin's lymphoma, and it's stage four. And so I thought, oh, lymphoma, I know that's cancer. Um, uh, stage four. Okay. Good-looking men are hot. They're tens. Ugly, they're ones. So one to four. Stage four. I looked at my husband, Fletch, and I said, well, it's a stage four, we got that going for us. <laughs> and he said, no, we don't. And it dawned on me at that point, oh boy. And so the doctor said, we need to give you some more tests and we need to figure out what's going on and figure out how much cancer you have, where it's located. So I it had to take a PET scan. So. I looked at my husband and I said, is that going to hurt? And he said, actually, this is a really great test. They bring in a golden retriever and he sniffs you. And where do I stop sniffing is where the cancer is. And I fell for it for one second. And I realized, okay, I know I'm not medically inclined, but... So anyway, the test results come back and I have cancer all in my lymph system, in my belly, and in my bone marrow, and and I'm lit up like a light bulb. And I thought, oh boy, this is, this is not good. And so one of the things that went through my mind is saying the word cancer, I felt like it empowered this terrible thing that was taking over my body. So I said, Fletch, we have got to name it something else. We can't tell people I have cancer. We can't call, we can't use that word. So. We decided that we had had a, a friend set up a blog to let family and friends know how I was doing, and we sent it out to the blog, and we said, we need a name for the cancer. What should we name it? 
And the best responses came back, and they made us laugh. Most of them started with F and ended in ING. <laughs> but my college roommate came back, her name was Carrie, and she said, you should name it Bush, because no matter what, it's gonna be gone by January of 09. <laughs> Twelve rounds, four meds. We're gonna put port in you, and you're not gonna feel very well. But if you can do it all, if you do all twelve, you'll be done in six months. So I thought, all right, bring it on. I can do this. And the first chemo, a lot like a, a really, really, really bad hangover for two days without the party. But you know what? I had taken that class in college, how to handle a hangover 101, every semester. So I was ready for this. I knew I could do it. But the best part about all of this was that I never was alone. I, not physically, I'm talking about the community and my family came together for me. They brought me dinners every night for six months. I never cooked. My friends mowed my lawn. Um, I had relatives raking leaves. I had friends weeding my garden, bringing my children to athletic events and other commitments. And, I was amazed at the love, and I, I, I didn't know how to thank people. I can't write a thank you note to everybody, and I love to write thank you notes, but that was not going to happen. And so, uh, when the last day of chemo occurred, my college roommate Carrie said, we need to go out to lunch, let's get together. So she asked me, what did you learn? And I said, great question. I'm going to live, I'm going to get my health back. And you know what I learned? That we should cherish every moment. And it's not that I didn't know that before, but I really didn't think I was ever going to die. I mean, don't we all kind of think that? But the other thing I learned was that what I'd been taught my whole life really wasn't true. It's better to be, to give than to receive. And you know what? That's not always true. Because if people didn't receive with gratitude and thankfulness and happiness, then people giving don't want to give. So I learned how to be a gracious receiver. Aww. Aww.